This video is sponsored by Caravan Guard Insurance. A link to their website is in the description below. Hello and welcome back to our mini series and this is part two and in this vlog I'm going to talk about buying a brand new caravan. It might be that you've never owned a caravan or you currently have one and you're looking to change it for a new one. I'm talking about new caravans because these things are fixed points that I can cover easily across all manufacturers. So today I've come to car remote homes and caravans who have kindly allowed us to film. This vlog goes across all manufacturers as I say. So what do we need to know about buying a new caravan? Well first of all I'm going to talk about our experience and how that can help you. As some of you may know we when we started looking for our new caravan back in 2017 and it was quite funny how it, it all happened really we spent a lot of time researching caravans we went on loads of dealerships and we actually had our heart set on an eldest 840 caravan and we went to a dealership where we got a price for that caravan and we wanted to order it but they said to us no wait and go to the nec in october and you'll get a good show deal and it was only about four weeks away was that show so they wouldn't take our deposit and we said okay and we were all excited about going to the NEC however in the meantime Andrew Ditton put out that vlog of the Adria Adora Isonzo and before then we'd never even heard of Adria and we watched Andrew's vlog and I saw this silver caravan and I said to Jules we need to go and have a look at one of those so we went off and we had a, a viewing of an Isonzo and that was it. My mind was completely changed at that point. And we went to the October NEC in 2017 and we ordered our Adria caravan and it arrived the following April. And the rest, as we say, is history. And look where we are now. So it's quite interesting how, although you can start your journey thinking you want one thing, things can happen along that journey where you end up with something else. And sometimes that certainly is for the better and it worked really well for us. So what can I share with you from our experience? Well, what we did was before we even looked at a caravan, we researched, researched and researched a bit more. So what I'd say to you is before you go looking, because it's a minefield, go online. There is so much advice. There's so much to see, go online. Online, you can research the layout, the budget of what you're looking at, the manufacturers, and the dealerships around you. There's so much to see. The things you want to think about are going to be your berths, how many people that caravan can sleep, your layout, do you want a fixed bed or bunks, and I'll show you those shortly. The size of it, do you want a huge caravan? Do you want something small and compact? Also, watch YouTube, which I presume you're doing right now, but YouTube's great. It has loads of experience from owners like ourselves. People are sharing their experience so you can gain some information from that. Because once you arrive at a dealership, some of those dealers may well just tell you anything to make a sale. People on YouTube like myself, we're not trying to sell you a caravan because we don't sell caravans. What we're trying to do is sell you your dream so you can buy a caravan and go off and enjoy it like we did. And let's be fair, you know, we really did tow our caravan all over. So first of all, do your research. That is the most important thing. It's also really important to note before you get your hopes up, number two, check your driving license restrictions. If you passed your driving test before the 1st of January 1997, you'll have what's called B plus E, the B E category, and that will be on the back of your driving license. If you have B E category, you can tow just about any car and caravan combination that's legally allowed on the road. You don't have to worry about the weight limits of that category. If you passed your driving test after that date, like Jules did, you will not be able to tow a combination of a caravan and a car over three and a half tons. 
and that's going to seriously limit the choice you have of caravan and car combination. So it might be that you have to take the additional B plus E test, which is probably going to cost you about £500, and it's certainly uh, worth investing in, so you don't have that worry about these weight limits. So that is number two, is check your driver's license. Point number three, when buying a new caravan. So you've got an idea of what you're wanting, you've checked your driver's license, budget. And this unfortunately is the bit that we all have to think about sometimes. Budget. Now, the reason we've gone with new caravans is it's easy to talk about price because the prices are fixed in the windscreen. All manufacturers across the UK, including Bailey, Eldis, Swift, Coachman, and then the European manufacturers such as Irwinheimer and Adria, they're going to have fixed prices that you can see online or at the dealership for their caravans. Now it might be that you're starting with an entry-level caravan such as a Bailey Discovery, a Bailey Phoenix, an Adria Altea, an Eldis Avante, or something like the Swift Base Camp or the Coachman Arcadia. Whatever it is, those are going to be entry-level caravans and you're going to be looking though at around £18,000. You might get some that are a little bit below that, but that's going to be a really basic price. The reality is most full birth caravans are going to start between 20 and £22,500. So you need to put that in your budget. The next step up, you're going to be looking at mid-range caravans, which is going to be the Adria Adora, the Bailey Pegasus, the Eldis Affinity, caravans like that. And you're going to be looking at around £25,000. Then we're going up into the more premium top end. You're going to be looking at the Adria Alpina, the Coachman Laser. We've got the Bailey Alicanto. And then we've got the Buccaneers and, and caravans like that. Most of those are going to be big, heavy caravans, and they're going to come with a price tag of anywhere between £30,000 and £36,500. So that is a huge budget. Financing caravans now, you can get finance, or it might be that it's a cash purchase, whichever is obviously most suitable for you. But the main outlay is going to be the purchase price. You also need to think about a tow vehicle. When we bought our Isonzo, we also had to buy a new tow car because our tow car uh, would, not be would not be able to match the weight of our Isonzo. So we also had to shell out on a new car. And that might be something you need to think about. Will your car tow your caravan? Do you need a tow bar fitting? So think about these additional costs. The next thing in your budget as well as buying the caravan, you might need a motor mover. Try and negotiate that in your deal if you can. You may well need accessories such as awnings. Now, a good awning could set you back anywhere from £600 to £2,000. They can cost a lot of money. Again, try and negotiate a bit of a discount if you can. And you're also going to have to think about other accessories such as your aqua roll, your waste master, and bedding and all those sort of things that you're going to need in there. We did do a vlog when we bought our caravan of accessories, and I think we worked out we spent about £2,000 altogether on accessories, including our awning and bits and pieces. So make sure you add that to the budget when you're thinking about your caravan. Whilst on the subject of accessories, you need to consider security devices for your caravan. These can include an alarm, tracker, wheel, chassis, and hitch locks. There are also other devices available on the market. Caravan insurance is a separate cost as well that can vary from around £100 up to £400. You can visit the Caravan Guard website through the link below and obtain a quote for your own caravan to give you an idea of how much that might cost you per year with your premium. Many of the security devices I've just mentioned will reduce your premium cost as well as having a no claims discount and using a Kosoa gold or silver storage yard for your caravan. The next thing, number four. Number four, we've had a look at what layout we think we want, we've checked we can tow it, and we've got our budget all planned out. It's time to hit the dealerships, and this really is the exciting bit, although it can get quite frustrating. What you should do is 
get an idea of the manufacturers you want to look at. As I've, I've mentioned, the main manufacturers there that you're going to find within the UK. Look around where you live and find dealerships that have a selection of those for you to view and go and visit that dealership. When you get there, my advice is go into all the caravans, go in, sit down and see how they feel. Though you'll see all sorts of layouts, you'll be totally confused. The best thing to do though is go and have a look. What we'll do now is we'll just have a look at a couple of layouts to give you an idea. So first of all, let's start with a layout such as this on the Altea Dart. So when you come to the dealership, obviously have a look at the caravans that meet your budget. Don't get carried away and go and sit in the luxury one when you can't afford it, because believe me, I've done that and then you get your hopes up. So have a look at what they've got in your budget. So come inside the caravan. Now, no dealership should have an issue with you spending time in a caravan. You should come in and, as I say, have a look around the lounge area, sit down in it, feel the cushions, have a look and see how it feels. Because one of the best ways to tell if you like a caravan is whether you even want to sit down. There'll be some that you step in and you just want to climb back out straight away and you know that's not for you. Whereas there'll be others that you really do just get that feeling and that's really important sometimes to go with that. Have a look at your kitchen space. Now some of us do a lot of cooking. Some of them people like me don't do any cooking at all because we're not very good at it. But is the kitchen space enough? Does it have an oven? Does it have a grill? Has it got the storage? Is it going to suit your needs? That's the most important thing. Look at the fridge and freezer as well. Personally, I always like a really good sized fridge and freezer because I like to stock up on food to keep Jules well fed. For you, it might not be so much of an issue if you prefer to eat out. On this layout, we have the centre washroom and with the separate shower and the toilet cubicle, it might be that that's a layout that you particularly like, that you don't want an all-in-one washroom, that you want it separate. The bedroom, is it that you want single beds or do you want an island bed? Island beds can be at the rear and some of them are further forward with a rear washroom. So decide which layout you're wanting. So this is just an example of a layout. Now this is a £21,000 caravan. This is in effect an entry level caravan. So it gives you an idea. Just because it's entry level, it doesn't mean that it's not nicely finished. And sometimes you might actually end up buying a lower level caravan than you even set out to look at. You don't have to spend your maximum budget. We'll venture on next and have a look at another layout as well, just to give you another idea. This caravan is the eldest Buccaneer Cruiser. It's a luxury caravan at £36,500. It has a side island bed, a mid kitchen and a large wraparound sofa in the lounge area. The bathroom of this one is in the rear of the caravan and that's where you'd find your toilet, your wash basin and separate shower cubicle. And with it being the luxury end, it is a tile effect as well. So that's another layout to consider. Let's move on now to a separate layout. You don't have to have an island bed or a fixed bed. Here's an example of a layout. Now this is, as we can see, two single beds. Now many caravans are going to give you good sized single beds, sometimes up to six foot five in length. So go and have a look if you're wanting the single bed layout. And some single bed layouts will also have the rear washroom. Equally, there's many layouts with an island bed that are going to offer this and some people prefer the, the rear washroom. Generally you'll find a shower in one corner and your toilet in the other. So this just gives you an idea on the Altea time of another layout altogether. We still get the kitchen and we still get a lovely lounge area but it's worth again just considering could it be that single beds are going to be a better layout for you. So there we go, let's move on to another layout. So this is an example of a family layout. Some caravans will take five or six adults and children all together, and that's known as a five or six berth. 
generally a family layout. This is quite common. Although the layout might be different depending on the caravan, you'll find the dinette, which will turn into a single bed, and then you'll find bunk beds. And here we've got three bunk beds all together. You'll then convert the lounge area into one large bed, and that'll give you those six berths all together. Generally on these sort of caravans, you will find that the toilet, washroom and shower is all part of one same unit because you have to save space somewhere and that's going to be the compromise. There is a family layout though if you're wanting a fixed bed as well and that's on the 868, the Eldis 868 Avante and we have reviewed that on our channel so you can look back and watch that if you're interested. And that has a very unusual layout, it has a fixed Island, a fixed French bed on this side and then it has bunk beds on this side so that's quite unusual and as I say you can look back and see that if you want. So here's a family layout, what we'll do next is we'll just go and have a look at a small two berth caravan. If you want something small, compact and for one or two people then something like the Adria Action, the Swift Base Camp or the Bailey Discovery could be for you. They're all priced at around £18,000 and they don't weigh much more than one ton. These are ideal if you don't have the B plus E category on your licence because you'll be well within that weight restriction with a small tow vehicle. And as you can see, they are pretty funky and these are ideal if you like to just shoot off for a short stay or you're going places with narrow roads and tight entries. These don't have fixed beds though, so what we'll do is we'll go inside and just have a look at this two berth layout. So inside a two berth, what are you going to find? Generally you're going to find a really good sized lounge area and that's because you haven't got a fixed bed taking up floor space, so they can extend the lounge area. Now this is what is going to convert into your bedroom space on a night and you'll convert this into one huge great big bed. You generally find on a two berth you get a good sized kitchen area and you get the all-in-one washroom shower room as well as opposed to a separate one but it completely depends on the manufacturer and what you're looking at but it gives you an idea that a two berth still has plenty of space in it it's, and it's often very clever how they use it. So there we go a little two berth let's pop back outside so once you think you have found the ideal caravan for you, it's time to negotiate on that deal that you're going to do with the dealership. It's worth considering calling around a number of dealerships by telephone and asking them for their best price on that caravan. I know some people always do like to buy near to home in case there are warranty issues and that is generally good advice. Once you've got the best price, Research the dealership as well, have a look at reviews, see what other buyers have said. You might be getting a great deal, but what about that aftercare, because that is very important. Use that to make a decision on the dealership. Negotiate on that price. Although demand right now is incredibly high, deals can still be done. And it might be that you can secure a deal on accessories such as the motor mover, an awning or a starter pack. Also think warranty. How much warranty does your new caravan come with? Because that could be important. And servicing as well. If you're going to be using the dealership for servicing, could you maybe negotiate something around the cost of your first service? These are all important things to decide. One thing I'd say is when you go to the dealership, don't let them tell you that that deal is only for today and you have to make, put a deposit down. It's a bit like when you go to the show and they tell you it's the show deal. Generally, you could negotiate that deal at other times. Don't be pressured into making a purchase. Come away and think about it. Only put a deposit down when you're absolutely sure that is the caravan you want to purchase. And once it is, get that deal done, put your deposit down and look forward to your new caravan arriving. While you're waiting for it to come, think about your accessories and get looking for sites to stop at as well because it really is an exciting process. The day that you're going to collect your caravan, the handover is really important, especially if you've never caravaned before. When we picked our first one up, believe me, we were all ears. 
listen to what the dealership tells you in the handover and film it if needs be so you can play it back later because when you get on site you will have totally forgotten most of it. YouTube is also an excellent place to go to look through videos to offer advice about things like setting up, filling up the water, emptying the toilet cassette. I hope these tips have been helpful in assisting you in the purchase of a new caravan. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. As I say, we bought our first new caravan back in 2017 and took delivery in 2018. So if any of our experience can help you, that's fantastic. So I'd just like to say thank you to Cara to let, for letting us film this vlog today. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I do hope you have enjoyed today's vlog. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.